Okay, we are going to find the slope and the deflection of point C on the beam given here. Now, the first thing I need to do is do some statics, find the reaction forces at A and at B. So if I sum the moments about A, I get uh, the midpoint is 3 halves A. Oops, 3 halves times A. And then the distributed load is 3A times W. Okay. Uh, and then I've got B, which is 2A away, so that'll be plus 2A times B equals 0. From that, I can find that B equals 9 fourths AW. If I sum the forces in the uh, Y direction, I'm going to have A, and I'm going to have B, which, of course, we just found to be 9 fourths AW. And then I've got the distributed load 3A w equal to 0. From that, I can find then that a is 3 fourths a w. Okay, so I've got those reaction forces. That's my first step. So this is 9 fourths a w, and this guy over here is 3 fourths a w. Now what I need to do is I basically need to cut uh, in two sections, right, between a and b, and then the overhang. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have two separate variables. I'm going to have an x1 coming from the left side, and I'm going to have an x2 coming from the right side, like so. And from that, I'm going to find the um, deflection curve, the slope curve for each one of those variables. So I'm going to have basically two deflection curves, one for x1, one for x2, and then the same thing for the slope curves. Okay. Now, to do that, I need to basically find the bending moment in each section. So I'll start right here. And I've got my distributed load W, right? I have 3 fourths AW uh, acting right there. Again, this is going to be cut at some point X1, okay? And then I'm going to have my shear V1 and my slope M1, okay? So from this, I'm going to go ahead and uh, sum my moments about my cut point. Okay, where I'm going to have M1, and then I'm going to have um, 3 fourths AW times X1. That'll be negative. That is the reaction over there, times A1. And then I'm going to have the distributed load, which occurs at X1 over 2. And again, that's going to be times W x1 okay and that's going to be equal to zero so from that i find that that bending moment i go ahead and solve for m1 is going to equal uh three fourths uh a w x1 minus w over two uh x1 squared equals one now i'm going to know how I relate the curve, uh, the beam curve, the deflection curve, to that moment. And I do that by the second derivative of the elastic curve. So that's going to be EI, and this is just the by definition. You look in your book if you want to see where this comes from. And it's the second derivative of that elastic curve, given like so. And then that's going to equal negative w over 2 x1 squared plus 3 fourths a w oops, x1 equals 0. So now what I do is I'm going to integrate this twice. The first integration will get me to the slope of that curve. Okay, The slope of the elastic curve, or the first derivative of the elastic curve, v1 dv1 dx1 and the derivative of that is going to be or I'm sorry the integral of that by integrating is going to be given as follows and then 3 eighths a w x1 squared and then I'm going to have an integration constant which I'm going to have to figure out uh, in a second now I have this equals zero this does not equal zero let me get rid of that okay so that is the slope, that's the integrate. I'm going to integrate one time. This will actually give me my elastic curve, V1, which is one of the things I'm looking for. I guess I'm also looking for the slope, okay? But 
that'll be v1. And again, doing that integral, first integra uh, integrating the first term, I get w over 24. This would be x1 to the fourth. And then I get uh, aw over 8, right, because the 3 will cancel when I go to x1 cubed. Okay, and then I have plus c3 x1, integrating that, and then I have c2, so I have a second, not c3, why do I have c3? That's not what I meant to do. And this should not be c2, this should be c1, pardon me for that, right? So I've got two constants of integration, one will show up in both of them, and then c2 only shows up in the deflection curve. Now, to get rid of these, I have to do basically boundary conditions. So for example, the easiest one to think about is at x1 equals 0, so this is at the left end of the beam, right? At point A, essentially, when x1 equals 0, f at that instant, v1 equals 0, right? There's no deflection at A, right? Because it's pinned there. So from that, okay, plugging in x1 equals 0 into that first equation, okay, plugging in, you know, v1 here and then x1 here, here, and here. Plugging in zeros for all that, all I'm left with is that c2 equals 0, right? Pretty easy, right? Just plugging in what I know about the deflection at the left end of the beam. So plugging in x1 equals 0 gets rid of all of those terms, and all I'm left with is c2 equals the deflection, which is 0 at this point. So c2 has to equal 0. Okay, so essentially this guy goes away. I'm going to do the same thing at point B. Okay, point B is x1 equals 2a, right? So when x1 equals 2a, I'm at point B. My deflection there is also 0. Okay, so I'm going to go back to that equation. I'll actually write this one out because it's a little less obvious, right? But I'm going to plug in v1 equals 0. And then that's going to equal negative w over 24. But now instead of x1, I'm going to use 2a to the fourth, and then plus aw over 8. Instead of x1, I'm going to go 2a cubed, and then c1. But then instead of x1, I'm going to use 2a here. And again, there is no C2. I've proven that that equals 0, so it does not show up. So now I just have a big equation. I know everything in this equation except for C1. I can calculate C1, solve for it, and I get minus a, w, oops, a cubed w over 6. Okay, So from that, I'm going to erase this. This is getting a little nut. Okay. So from that, oh, and that's not that. That should be C1. Okay. All right. So now I've got the equation for slope and deflection for the left side of the beam. Now I have to do the same thing on the right side of the beam. Okay. This time I'm going to cut from the right side of the beam from C over, and I'm going to have X2. So I make that cut like so, and again I'm going to cut it at some arbitrary point x2. I'm going to have my distributed load w, then I'm going to have m2 over here and v2 over here. Right? So the same idea, I can sum my moments. I'm going to have negative m2 over on this side of the beam. Okay, and then the only th other thing I have, again, from that, from from the cut side, is going to be negative x2 over 2 times w times x2. Right, it's just that distributed load. Okay, and then that equals zero. So from that, I can solve the moment m2 simply equals negative w over 2 x2 squared. 
Now I'm going to use the exact same equation that I had previously, where the second derivative of the curve equals that moment. And then I'm going to integrate it twice to find the slope and to find the um, the elastic curve. So the slope is the first integral. dv2 dx2. And from that I get minus w over 6 x2 cubed. And then that's going to be plus another integration constant that I'll call c3. Integrate one more time to get the elastic curve, so this will just go to V2, and I get minus W over 24, because I'm going to have X2 to the fourth, and then plus C3, X2, and then I'm going to have another integration constant, C4. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's called a continuity equation, okay? And what I have here is at point B, that's where x1 and x2 kind of join, right? At point B there, okay? So the slope has to be the same there, right? I can't have a kink in, in the beam there. So the slope I know has to be the same. However, keep in mind that x1 moves to the right, x2 moves to the left, so that slope, the rise over the run, I've got a negative run, right? So instead of the slopes being equal, one slope will equal negative the other slope because the x's are in opposite directions. Again, and the whole idea is I can't have a kink in there. I have to have a continuous slope that occurs right there. So this is my uh, continuity equation, okay? So what happens here is when x2 equals a, okay, so when x2 is at b, okay, x1 is at 2a, so it's at b as well, it's just 2a over. So when those two things are true, then the slopes have to be equal to each other, and more precisely, the slope of one has to equal the negative slope of the other. And again, the reason for that is because my, my runs, my x's are in opposite direction. Okay, so one slope equals negative the other slope. So now I'm going to use that second equation, okay? And I'm going to plug in for x1, I'm going to plug in 2a. So I get negative w over 6, 2a cubed plus 3 eighths a w. 2a squared minus a cubed w over 6. And again, this equation is coming from up here. That is that equation. That's the slope equation. Okay. Again, I know c1 is negative a cubed w over 6, so that's where that comes from. So that is the slope when x1 equals 2a. And I know that equals negative the slope above when x2 equals a. So from that, I'm going to get w over 6 a cubed minus c3. And again, I flip the signs on these because it's negative. Again, this comes from right there, right? And I just flip the signs on those so that they're negative. So the slope of 1 equals the negative slope of 2. And again, that's because x1 and x2 are opposite of one another. Okay, So I have to have that continuous slope going on there. So I get this big, ugly equation. But from that, I can calculate that C3 equals W a cubed all over 6. Okay, so now I know C3. So now I also know what the position is 
at B, right? That is when x2 equals A, right? I'm at point B there, so again, my deflection is zero. That means V2 equals zero, okay? So not only are the slopes equal between the two, but I know that the deflection is zero at that, right? So when x2 equals a, the position has to be zero. So now I'm going to use that deflection curve, and I'm going to say, okay, well, zero, which is what v2 has to equal, equals negative w over 24. And now instead of x, I'm going to use a, so this will be a to the fourth plus C3, which I now know is WA cubed over 6 times X, which is just A. So I'll throw the A in there like that. Plus C4. So from that, I can find that C4 equals, just solving for C4 there, I get C4 equals W A to the fourth all over 8. All right, so now I can actually start writing some equations. And the equations I'm going to write, because notice I'm trying to find the deflection of point C, so I'm going to write the X2 equations, or the V2 equations, I should say, right for that right side of the beam, because I want to figure out what's going on at point C. So I really only need the deflection and slope curve of that. But let me go ahead and write these out so we can see exactly <coughs> what we get. So the deflection V2 as a function of X2 is given by 1 over EI times negative W over 24 x2 to the fourth plus w a cubed over 6 times x2 minus w a to the fourth over 8. And again, that's just plugging in c3, c4 into it. That is the equation of that line, okay, as a function of x. I can do the same thing for the slope as a function of that. So dv2 over dx2 equals 1 over ei times negative w over 6 x2 cubed plus w a cubed all over 6. And again, that's just that equation plugging in what I know about c3, okay, and solving for the slope. Now, all I need to do, if I want to find the deflection at point c and the slope at point c, point c is x2 equals 0, right? That is where point C is, so I just plug in that, and from that I can very easily find that the deflection, plugging in 0 for that, is just going to be the wa to the fourth. This will be a negative wa to the fourth all over, uh, that would be 8 ei. That is the deflection at point C when x2 equals 0. The slope at that point, same thing. I plug in x2 equals 0, and I just, for the slope equation, all I'm left with is wa cubed all over 6ei. All right, so there is a lot there, okay? But in general, what you're doing is you're finding the bending moment, taking a couple of integrals, applying some boundary and continuity equations to figure out the constants in order to find the 
slope curve as well as the elastic curve for the beam. A little tedious, but can be done.